fancy. So it does go up, or it does go off road, but uh, not up the stairs. All right, let's go back. So I tweeted out to see if anyone needed any advice for freelance. Uh, I've been a freelancer for quite some time now. I don't have much service where I'm at right now, so I think I'll only get to one right here that I already had up. Our good friend Brian Lovin. How has the freelance game changed over the past few years? People ask me this a lot. Is it still a good time to go freelance? Yes, it's always a good time to go freelance. But it is different because there are a lot more designers nowadays. I do think it's harder to be a freelancer and get all the work because it's so spread out now, not so much contained as it was back in the day. But even though there's a lot of designers, there's still someone out there looking for you. Um, your style, your way of work, your location, your pay, whatever it is, someone is out there looking for you to hire. So don't be discouraged. If you think there's a lot of designers, there's actually a lot of work, so you know, there's a new company every single day. Um, a new startup every single day that just raised their next round and looking to hire someone, you know, whether full-time or part-time. So there's always opportunity to freelance and get your work out there. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. I actually had to go up north to drop the van off at the shop to get it fixed. It's doing this like crazy death wobble thing when I go downhill really fast. Very scary. Uh, finally taking it to get it fixed or looked at, hopefully fixed. And so I had to get a rental car for $10 more. I am now in a brand new Lincoln Navigator that is turbocharged. $10 more. Thank you, Enterprise. This thing is awesome. It's got leather seats, heated seats, everything's moving. Obey when traffic I... laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. And it's very protective. So this isn't the best vlogging steering wheel. It's got like this, I don't know, there's not enough space to hold the camera. So this is probably gonna slide a lot. And it's not in my view, like in my van. But we're doing it. So if I'm looking this way, it's because I'm trying to be safe. Like right now, I'm not being safe. Safe, not safe. Safe. Yeah, the GGB. One of my favorite things about San Francisco is this bad boy. If you just look to the right, it's super cloudy and foggy, which is where I just was. So the three things that I do and focus on when I'm freelancing, number one is I first become friends with my client. I think it's very important that you start a relationship off as more of a less businessy and more personal. So I talk about them, I talk about their family, you know, activities that they like to do, whatever it is. I just try to get more personal with the client. And I make the first initial conversations 
not about the project at hand, but all about them. I want to know about them. And if they try to talk about me, I'll talk about me for a minute, but I try to keep putting it back to them just because I want them to know that I care about them as people more so as this project. Though I care about this project a lot, I just, you know, I want them to understand that I am valuing their relationship as well as the project. Number two is just being like flexible. I think you need really need to be flexible with everything, you know, with your pricing, with the hours you work, um, with your skill set. I think the best way to have a successful project freelance is to be flexible. Um, for me personally, I'm very flexible on my pricing. I have a go-to number that I always throw out, but if a client can't hit it, we talk about it, we come up, I ask them what they can hit, and then we figure it out from there. Um, everyone has different budgets. You can't expect a same number every time. And number three, and again, these are things that I do. I'm not saying anyone else should do. I'm just saying I do these things and they work for me and I enjoy doing these things. But number three is trust. Trust. If you're, you're dealing with these huge companies, um, if you both are grown-ups and are doing your work right, there's no reason to be afraid. I know that I'm going to deliver work. I know that if a client is not happy with my work, I'm going to continue to go until they are happy. Um, I just think that's good business and good for the relationship. And again, the relationship is what's more, more important. Here she is. How about beauty? Might help if I turn on the remote. Just got back to the city and I am very, very late to a meeting. Um, I actually totally forgot a client was coming into town today. Alright, this tweet is from George Stefanis. How do you get over the fear of getting out of money? As in you won't have clients and won't be able to pay rent, etc. That's a great question, man. The way I get around that is I basically always try to have multiple projects going at once. So Gabriel Valdivia asked, uh, what are your favorite tools for the non-designing parts of freelance, like project management, accounting, and invoicing? I don't use anything. I, I mean, the only tools that I use for freelance is email and Photoshop. I don't use anything else. I don't use an invoicing tool. I don't use calendars. Um, I mean, I guess nowadays I use Slack, but not for freelance. My clients aren't on Slack usually, so... It's still just email. But what I actually, I'll take that back. What I do use a lot is text message. I prefer to text my clients instead of emailing them. I think it's just more personal. I think it just it just feels better. It feels more immediate. Um, and it feels more like we're really involved in, in a project together. So um, text message, email, and Photoshop. I don't think I ever use anything else. Seth Jinx. How would a young designer get leads today? Um, that's a great question. I think I think majority of it is word of mouth and relationships. So I think you got to put yourself out there. I think you you know if there's a product you like or um, a company that you like, you know, do some free pro bono work. You know, just to get in the door to talk to them. Even if they don't want to hire you or the work's not good, they're gonna know 10 other people that might be looking for a designer or that could use that could use your help on a side project or something. So even if one person says no, they know 10 other people. And if those 10 people say no, you know, keep doubling that, keep tripling that. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna find someone that needs someone. You know, the old knocking on doors thing to find work to sell something, that's real. <music>